Hello everyone. Today I will be presenting about the pr proton exchange membrane electrolyzers and then I will go a little bit more in detail about the selection of the bipolar plates. So in order to get a clear idea on the bipolar plates and their function, it is necessary to understand the working mechanism of the proton exchange membrane electrolyzer. Hence, for this presentation, I will be briefly covering the topics of what are PM electrolyzers, the components that make up a PM electrolyzer cell, and then I will go a little bit more in detail about the bipolar plates, or also known as the separator plates, and the material comparison for the bipolar plates. So let's get started on the PM electrolyzers. The PM electrolyzers is one of the four technologies used for splitting water using electricity and catalyst to produce hydrogen and only oxygen as the byproduct. Now, this is a crucial advantage of this technology as no carbon dioxide emissions are generated within the cell, making this technology extremely environmental friendly. The four water electrolysis technologies are alkaline water electrolysis, solid oxide electrolysis, microbial electrolysis, and lastly, the proton exchange membrane water electrolysis. However, in terms of sustainability and environmental impact, PEM water electrolyzer is one of the most favorable methods for conversion of renewable energy to high purity hydrogen. So now let's look at the working mechanism of the uh, proton exchange membrane electrolyzer. Now, initially, this is how the P uh, proton exchange membrane electrolyzer looks like. Uh, later, I will go a little bit more in detail on the components. So it is mainly made up of a cathode, an anode, a backing layer, a catalyzer, and then right in the middle here is the proton exchange membrane. So initially, the water enters through the anode side of the PM electrolyzer, and then it combines to the catalyst uh, within the proton exchange membrane uh, and breaks down into its individual components of two hydrogen ions and an oxygen molecule, which later these hydrogen ions combine with electrons to form pure hydrogen and the uh, oxygen molecules combine together to form pure oxygen, which are the, both the products of this technology. Now, the main advantage of this technology is that it uses renewable energy. It relies on the sun, wind, hydropower energy. What makes this technology more efficient than other electrolysis technologies is that, that it's capable of handling alternating current. Uh, due to the unpredictability of renewable energy, this technology makes it highly sufficient to make total use of the uh, energy. Now, uh, whenever the energy from the sun or hydropower is not used, uh, the electrolysis cell converts the water into pure hydrogen, which can later be stored and used as the energy source as well by using fuel cells, whereby it takes up the hydrogen, converts it into electricity. Now, uh, this is still, uh, is, as you can see here, it's still creating the hydrogen uh, purity. Now, to look at the, to have a clear look at the membrane cell electrolyzer, uh, here we can see that the water molecule attaches right to the catalyst of the PEM and then it breaks down the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen and only hydrogen is allowed to pass through the proton exchange membrane electrolyzer and oxygen remains on the, an uh, on the anode side whereas the hydrogen moves to the cathode side. Hydrogen here combines with the uh, electrons and forms pure hydrogen uh, this function uh, or the selective barrier of the proton exchange membrane is highly efficient due to it uh, preventing the mixing up of these two gases, which can uh, be fatal to the cell and also reduce the efficiency of the cell and the purity of the products. So now that we've gone through the working mechanism, we can have a clear look on the components of the proton exchange membrane electrolyzer. First, we have the bipolar plates. The function of the bipolar plates includes the distribution of the fuel and oxidants inside the cell. They're also responsible for separating the fuel cells from one another in a stack cell. They collect the electric current generated in the electrolysis process. They also remove the products from the cell. And lastly, they're responsible for the humidification of the membrane and cooling of the cell down whenever temperatures start to rise. Then we have the gasket. 
Gasket is an important element of the electrolyzer as it provides insulation and sealing of the anode and cathode to avoid gas crossover, which is again crucial as this prevents the crossing over of gases and hence increases the efficiency of the cell and the purity of the product. Next up, we have the gas diffusion layer. The gas diffusion layer connects the membrane electrode assembly with the bipolar plate as it is responsible for management of the reactants and products, the transport of water across the cell, and the transport of heat and electricity in the cell. It also provides mechanical support to the electrolyzer assembly itself, which is highly efficient because it prevents the breakage and, uh, and the collapsing of the cell. Lastly, we have the whole membrane electrode assembly, which consists of the electrocatalyst, the proton exchange membrane, and the ionomer solution. This assembly is the backbone of the PEM electrolyzer, and it is where the electrochemical reaction takes place, where the water is separated into oxygen, hydrogen ions, and electrons, as I have demonstrated earlier. Apart from those components, there's also the clamping mechanism and the separator plates that keep the structure together to avoid any leakage and increase the efficiency of the cell. So now that we have gone through the components, it's safe to say that although the PAM electrolyzer technology is a great approach towards sustainable energy and the net zero carbon emissions uh, policy implemented by a lot of countries, it is still not widely adapted in the world. As we can see from the figurative data here, electrolysis only makes up about 4% of the total hydrogen production. One of the reasons is due to its high setup cost and high electrical demand uh, of the electrolyzer technology itself. Now, the high electrical demand can be very, a very demotivating factor to adopt this technology because if you do not have renewable uh, energy sources, it can be extremely costly and not worth the process. Next up, the cost of the cell is another factor that uh, contributes to the downward of this technology. Now, let's break down the cell cost. As we can see here, the stack cell itself makes up about 53% of the total cost of the electrolyzer. Furthermore, the bipolar plates, also known as the separator plates, uh, and the current collector make up uh, altogether about 60% of the total cost of the stack cell. Now, this is because the materials that are used to construct these components are mostly uh, extremely expensive and precious, uh, precious metals like titanium and gold. Um, however, ongoing research is, there, is still being conducted in order to find alternatives to these materials to reduce the cost of the cell and make it more, more uh, likable by uh, manufacturers. Now, let's go in detail about the bipolar plates. A little bit of a recap on the function of bipolar plates. So the bipolar plates are responsible for the separation of the gases, uh, which are hydrogen and oxygen on the anode and cathode side, uh, as their mixing will result in lower efficiencies of the plant and affect the purity of the product. It is also responsible for the current transfer from the positively charged anode to the negatively charged cathode. Bipolar plates help with the optimal water distribution over the active area toward the anode side electrode structure resulting in a more enhanced reaction. And lastly, uh, they are also responsible for the transport of produced gases out of the cell. Now, uh, as you can see here, the bipolar plates have about four types of flow regimes. These are the most common types, including the serpentine flow, the multi-serpentine flow, the parallel flow, and integrated flow. Now, the fluid comes in of this flow uh, type, and then it leaves uh, depending on the shape of the flow. Now, there are a few factors to consider once we want to select the material of the bipolar plates and the flow regime of the plates. Some of these factors include its cost, its ability to withstand corrosion, its ability to conduct heat and electricity, its gas diffusion ability, and mechanical strength of the material. Cost is actually one of the main factors when it comes to selecting the material of the bipolar plates, as the bipolar plates themselves make up about 48 percent of the total cost and tend to be very expensive when this is produced on a large scale. Its ability to withstand corrosion, conduct heat and electricity is also a valuable factor 
as these directly affect efficiency of the cell and its degradation rate. So in order to make the cell last longer and produce higher uh, uh, purities and higher uh, volumes of the desired product, these are extremely important factors to consider. The bipolar plates need to be able to transport the gases in the correct direction and not allow them to diffuse through it to avoid the mixing of the elements in separate cells. And lastly, the mechanical stability of the, of the plates needs to be assessed in order to prevent it from breaking, which will result in the leakage of the, uh, of the elements, which in turn will reduce the efficiency of the cell. Now, what are the most common materials that, are made, that make up the bipolar plates? First, we have titanium. Titanium is one of the most widely used element in the electrolyzer. It is mainly used in the anode side of the proton exchange membrane electrolyzer cell, as this is the area where the oxidation and electrolysis of the water takes place, resulting in extremely corrosive environments that can have a pH of as low as 2.5 or 4. Depending on the cell, titanium is suitable in this region due to its high ability to, to withstand corrosive environments. Apart from this, titanium is also a good conductor of heat and electricity and has great mechanical strength. However, titanium is extremely expensive and tends to oxidize in the cell, uh, in the cell due to the corrosive environment, resulting in the production of titanium oxides, which lower the efficiency of the cell due to its semiconductive behavior. Titanium is usually coated with other materials like gold or platinum to prevent its oxidation, which in turn even further increases the price of the plate. Now, graphite is a very commonly used material as well. Uh, due to its low contact resistance and high chemical sp uh, stability in acidic environments, it has become a very popular choice. As a result, it has a higher corrosion resistance uh, uh, and uh, in comparison to other metals. Uh, graphite, just like titanium, is naturally brit brittle, in the, uh, brittle, which makes it difficult to engrave the flow path uh, in it, resulting in higher manufacturing costs and also makes it prone to cracking. So the flow path that we have seen uh, earlier, the flow regime, it can be very difficult to engrave within the graphite due to its brittleness. Um, now, to overcome this issue of brittleness, it is combined with a polymer like polypropylene to make it less brittle. Graphite is also lighter than metals and has lower mechanical strength. Um, graphite is still a very popular choice due to it being cheaper than titanium and any other metals. Now, current researches are being conducted to construct cheaper material that can be used to replace titanium in order to reduce the overall capital cost of the proton exchange membrane electrolyzer. Stainless steel is a great option to replace titanium due to it being cheaper and it's also more easily to machine compared to brittle titanium. However, it easily oxidizes in, in acidic environments uh, and the product of, it, if, uh, of its oxidation can poison the uh, membrane electrode assembly and hence it needs to be coated with other elements. Uh, because this uh, corrosion of the stainless steel can result in the uh, decreased efficiency of the PM electrolyzer cell. Studies have been conducted on the niobium titanium coated stainless steel as well as the platinum titanium coated stainless steel. Neo uh, niobium is a good substitute to platinum as it exhibits superior corrosion protection characteristics and is more stable in acidic environments in comparison to, uh, to platinum. In this type of plate, titanium is only used as a coat. Uh, hence, the cost of the plate is lower due to lesser amount of titanium being used. Um, this plate further reduces the interface contact resistance, resulting in higher efficiencies of the plate. It was also proven that the coats on stainless steel do not reduce its ability to conduct heat and electricity, hence not reducing the efficiency of the cell and making it slightly more um, uh, having the same characteristics. Each coating has a different function and both of them are necessary. Nubidium re reduces the interface contact resistance of the titanium coating and then in return titanium coating prevents the corrosion of stainless steel. Now why is nubidium not uh, only efficient to when it coated on stainless steel. This is because studies have shown that 
If you use nubidium or platinum uh, on stainless steel, the layer does, does not adhere properly on the stainless steel. And under these uh, acidic environments of the electrolyzer cell, this layer tends to detach itself from the stainless steel, uh, exposing the stainless steel to the corrosive environment, and hence it is not as efficient. We can also see that uh, if you coat titanium only on stainless steel, the interface contact resistance remains high, which is unwanted for a better efficiency of the cell, right? So uh, the coating of niobium, we can see here that it has reduced interface contact resistance greatly. Lastly, um, platinum and titanium coated stainless steel was also investigated, and it was proven that stainless steel would still corrode if it was only coated with titanium. Platinum coating is necessary to avoid this and also prevent oxidation of titanium, which in turn decreases the degradation rate of the cell. So uh, positive results were obtained when this plate was used in either the anode or cathode side of the cell. So um, these are the current researches that have been undergoing. However, uh, these researches are still under progress in order to find materials that can better substitute titanium and stainless steel. So further investigations are still being undergone in order to reduce the capital cost of the cell and at the same time um, provide, uh, does, do not reduce any of the efficiency of the cell and uh, allow it to produce uh, pure hydrogen with a higher efficiency rate. So these are the references that I've utilized throughout this uh, research. Um, that's all for me, thank you.